So you just got yourself a brand new griddle. Congratulations. I hope you also bought yourself a bigger pair of pants because after about three months of cheese steaks, fried rice, and smash burgers, you're gonna need them. Trust me, I know from experience. In this video, I'm gonna go over some basics about your griddle, uh, do's and don'ts, exactly what it is, and all that good stuff so you can start making some delicious food for your family. Hi, I'm Johnny, a professional drinker, amateur griddler. So I've had my Camp Chef four burner here for about two years, and I've had my Blackstone two burner for about one year, and I figured rather than just me talking to you the whole time, I'd actually show you a cook on each of these as I go over the basics of a griddle. We'll go over what is a griddle, seasoning a griddle, accessories for the griddle, and two cooks um, kind of explaining how it works. Really, really easy cooks that I'd highly recommend you do for your first time. So let's check it out, huh? First off, what is a griddle? Real quick, Cliff Notes version like you're cheating on a test from your buddy, right? Look, so it's, it's a flat piece of steel. Some people make ceramic ones, but most of these are just cold rolled steel that you know you can cook your food on that you would see in a diner or hibachi, like Japanese steakhouse type place. Um, and they're commonly used for like, you know, pancakes and breakfast and stuff in diners. Similar to like what your mom probably used to make pancakes on with the little Hamilton Beach thing. You pull out, you plug it in the electric griddle, you know, it goes into the wall every Sunday morning, except for these things are a lot bigger and you can get a lot more done on them. A few quick notes about a griddle compared to like your grill or your stove. First off, remember with a grill, you got a lid. Most griddles don't come with lids. Like I bought this one but this one did come with a lid, but for some reason most don't. I don't know why, I don't wanna get on my soapbox about it, it makes no sense to me, but most of them don't. So you're just cooking right on the flat surface. So you gotta remember that you're not closing the lid like a grill and getting all of the heat around it for the indirect heat, you're just doing the like direct on the grill surface. So keep that in mind if you're doing things with bones in them, like chicken thighs with bones, or if you wanted to do something bigger, like you couldn't do like ribs or something like that on the griddle, you know, cause there's no cover. You could buy a dome, which I have one down here, which is a little dirty, but um, you could buy a dome and use that. And that would also work as kind of a cover, but it's a little different from the grill in that aspect. Now your stove, the one thing that's similar about the stove is you got these, you know, little eyes here for low, medium, high. And oftentimes, like on your stove, you think, oh, I'm gonna put one on high to boil water, one on low just to simmer some sauce or something. Well, on a griddle, they're gonna affect each other because it's one big piece of steel. So if your first one's on high and your second one's on low, the second one's actually not on low because <laughs> it's getting heat from the first one, so it's probably closer to medium. So that's why I recommend getting a thermometer in general, but just keep that in mind because on your stove, you could have one on high, one on low. They're not gonna interact or affect the heat of the other one. But on the griddle, you got all four of them on, you know, they're gonna affect each other. So you just gotta kind of be aware of that when you're doing your temperatures. But I really do always recommend getting an infrared thermometer. Seasoning, we'll go over real quick here. So look, this is on the two burner. You're putting down a little thin layer of oil, spreading it around while your griddle's turned all the way up hot and burning it off, okay? That's it, you're gonna do that three times. You get a brand new griddle, all you gotta do, wipe it down with water, put a thin layer of oil, I'm talking like one to two tablespoons, turn it to high, wait 15, 20 minutes to burn it off, do that two more times. I have a longer video about this, I'll put that in the description if you wanna see that, but it's really not that complicated. Just grab a couple beers, knock it out in an afternoon. Uh, storage and placement of your griddle, well, what I would say about storage is, like I said, a lot of them don't come with lids, so you're gonna have to get a lid, which sucks. Also, you might wanna get a cover if you really wanna protect it. You can see mine had some dust and debris on it, so that's because I ripped my cover and I need to go get a new one, but you definitely wanna at least buy a lid or else you're gonna ruin the top, the steel. You're gonna have to, not ruin it, but it'll just keep getting dirty and you have to keep cleaning it over and over again. But something like this, the little mini guy comes with a lid, which is nice. So you can buy these on like Amazon or Etsy. Um, they make them for all the different models, custom people make them. Also, just like a grill, don't put it next to your house with vinyl siding. It will get hot, it will melt the vinyl siding. It puts out a lot of heat even on the side here. I don't know if you can see, but on the side where you put the, uh, 
the two shelves where maybe you'll place your bottles of oil or water or something, I've burnt plastic bottles there numerous times. So it puts out a lot of heat coming out of the side of those shelves. So it's gonna burn a plastic bottle, it'll also burn the side of your house. So just be careful with where you store your griddle. Our first cook is a sausage scramble. We're putting down some oil and some frozen little hash brown patties. We'll go over oil and preheating during this cook. Oil, use whatever one you want, okay? I like canola, I like avocado, but I've used olive oil. I've used hand spray. Just use, you know, don't overthink it. People get really particular about their oil. Avocado oil has a higher temperature that it burns at, so that's why I kind of like that. But just use whatever you have on hand. If you want to go down the oil rabbit hole on the internet, which one to cook with for which things, go for it, but just don't overthink it. These hash brown patties are great, super easy. You just keep flipping them. The sausage, you don't need as much oil because it's naturally fatty. And so now I'm pouring the eggs into the sausage and the oil from the sausage is in there, so they're not gonna stick to the griddle. So that's why, you know, you don't need as much oil. When I preheat my griddle, I turn all four burners on low to get it to about 350, 375. And I don't put anything down really until it's preheated, especially like smash burgers. If you wanna get a nice sear on your smash burgers, you gotta make sure that thing's hot, like rip roaring up to 400, 425, 450. The only thing I might put down while the griddle is warming up is bacon, okay? So if you put your bacon down while the griddle is warming up like I did here in this cook, you can see that it, sometimes it doesn't curl as much. So as the griddle heats up, the bacon heats up and the fat cooks out and then it won't curl as much. But not that curly bacon is the end of the world, you just get some uneven parts of the cook with curly bacon. So back to the scramble here. You really, you just do sausage, you chop it up, you add the eggs. Once they set up, you add the cheese. Once the eggs set up, cut it all off. Cut it all off, okay? And then you're left with this beautiful scramble with those hash browns that you just flipped over a couple times. Super easy cook. Get yourself a beer. Mm. Accessories. Okay, look, the only thing you have to have to get started is a spatula, metal preferably, tongs, metal preferably, plastic will melt probably on these things. and then after that, I honestly recommend a thermometer. Like I said, the infrared thermometer. Sure, there's a million other accessories to buy and I have a video on that as well, which will be down in the description with the other videos. However, if you're talking about just getting started, don't feel like you have to buy a ton of stuff. The next two things, squirt bottles, they're nice. Yeah, that would probably be next on my list, but it's definitely not necessary. You probably got a spatula at home already that's metal. You probably got metal tongs already for your grill. And I would just get a thermometer just to get used to the temperatures. Do you need to use it every time? Not, not always, not eventually, you'll get used to your griddle. But initially, you really wanna know how hot it is on different settings, you know, for low, medium, high for your brand of griddle. Low on this griddle is different than low on this griddle and low on your griddle at home. So those are the three ones really that you need. Don't, don't wait for other stuff to get started, man. Just, just go for it. Get the griddle going, get yourself a beer, start making some smash burger or start making this egg roll in a bowl. Got a pound of ground beef going down first on the griddle that we're just gonna chop up. Um, and in this part of the cook, we'll go over the temperatures that I like to cook things at in the cooking order. So look, we're just chopping up this ground beef with my dough scraper, which is not a necessary accessory. I know I just went through the list, but I do love it. I will say I love it, but it's not a necessary one. So, but you cut this up and then you chop it just like the sausage. And then I threw down some green onions. I like to saute a few green onions and then use more as a garnish. Most people just use them just as garnishes, but these are real easy cooks. You're really just brown and beef, brown and sausage, and then adding a few ingredients. Um, I'm doing this at 375 again until my beef gets cooked all the way through. Then I'll mix them with the green onions. So I, I do different items at different temperatures on the griddle. Um, most things are from 350 to 375. That's why you want a thermometer because it's different to what they get to. And you see this chart here. I got at 300 to 325 is where I'll do my eggs. You don't want to do your eggs any higher than 325 or else they'll burn. Okay, so you need a thermometer, you need to do your eggs last, and you need to do them around three to 325 eggs, omelets, and toasting bread. You don't have to toast bread there. I just like to go low and slow to get the toast that I want. 350 to 375 is where I do the general, most of all my cooking. So we're talking chicken, regular burgers, ground beef, 
ground sausage, everything else is gonna be in that middle 375 range. Then over 400 is where you're gonna get a sear. So I'll do my spash burgers over 400 and I'll do my steaks over 400 to sear them. I don't cook them the whole time over 400, like 425, 450, you can get as high as you want. Really get a nice sear on those steaks, but I will then sear them, move them to the other side of the griddle and then finish them around 375. Smash burgers, you smash them down like 450. They'll be done in like a minute. They're too thin to worry about burning the outside without getting the inside cooked. But with steaks, if you do them at three, 450 the whole time, you're gonna go from seared to burnt and the inside's still not gonna be at the appropriate temperature. So keep that in mind. Back to our egg roll. You can see there's a lot of fat on this. So I like to get all the fat off where the otherwise with the sausage, I didn't get the grease off because I needed it for the eggs. Here, I want to get it off. I don't want the grease in the cabbage later because it's just, it's too greasy. So, and it was 70, 30 ground beef because I'm cheap. So it was really greasy. So we're going to put a little bit of garlic in here. And then we're also going to hit it up with our cabbage. So let's go over cooking order here. You start with what takes the longest, the meat. And then you put on last what's the shortest, which happens to be the cabbage and the veggies. A good example of this is breakfast. You'll see this chart here, my breakfast cooking order. I start with bacon and potatoes, the meat and the potatoes. And then I will go ahead and move along to the pancakes. Then we'll do the eggs. Then we'll do the toast last. So if you start with the eggs, you're just, they're gonna be cold or they're gonna be burnt. So you start with the bacon and then you go from there. Same thing that's going on in this egg roll in a bowl. We started with the meat, then the cabbage. Now we're gonna add our soy sauce. Pretty generous with this. There's no measurements here. I'm just kind of winging it. You can always add more soy sauce at the end if you like to. Um, I go ahead and toss everything together with the garlic, the soy sauce here. And we're looking pretty good. Looks like the inside of an egg roll, huh? But then we're gonna do some teriyaki. I just do a little bit more teriyaki to add flavor. Um, again, whoever's eating it can add more teriyaki at the end or more soy sauce if that's what they like. That's why I like this. You could add so many more vegetables too, like um, snow peas, zucchini, uh, water chestnuts. I love water chestnuts. Just remember that. Feel free to add more to this. Sesame oil is a finishing oil. Do not skip the sesame oil. I'm telling you, I'm the type of person that usually when it's something weird, I'm like, I'm not gonna put that in there. I don't care what that guy says, but don't. Buy it, use it for your fried rice and for this, it's delicious. Yum yum sauce goes on top with the green onions. And I mean, that's really it. It's really easy. You'll customize this, add more vegetables. I think you'll really enjoy this as one of your first cooks on the griddle. Ah, well, now you know how to season it. You know your accessories. You know basically what a griddle is. You got two really, really easy recipes that you can make on your griddle that I promise you will turn out great and you can alter them or add to them easily to make them even better than whatever I made. The only thing you gotta do now after you're done cooking is clean. And the video I have about cleaning is on your screen now. So click on that, you'll figure out how to clean your griddle and you're all good to go, man. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Keep on griddling.